this is how you can make a github search command using your discord.js version 14 bot so let's go and get started before i show you how to do this i'd like to say that if you're interested in getting a bot package made by me you can go ahead and click the links in the description below Currently, we have three of these, and the features list is within them if you actually go ahead and click on it. Or you could go ahead and get a super or god tier on YouTube. All of this will be in the description below if you're interested, and with that, let's go ahead and get into the code. Alright, so we can start by going over to community, and we can go ahead and create github search. JS. We're going to get our slash command builder and we can also get our embed builder and then we can do equals require and we're going to go ahead and get discord.js. Then we can do const puppeteer equals require and we're going to go ahead and get our puppeteer package just like that. Now we can do module.exports and we're going to go ahead and open this up. We can get our data which is going to be our new slash command builder. You can go ahead and start by setting a name which is going to be github search and we can go ahead and set a description. We can go ahead and search for github repositories then we can go ahead and add a string option and we can do option arrow function option dot set name and this is going to be our query then we can go ahead and set a description we can go ahead and say the thing to search for and we're going to go ahead and set required to true then we can add a comma we're going to do async executes we can go ahead and get our interaction and we can go ahead and open this up we're going to start by getting our options and we can set that equal to our interaction here and we can also go ahead and do cons query equals and we can do options to get string which is going to be our query string then we can go ahead and do await interaction dot defer reply and we're going to go ahead and set informal to true on that reply so now we can actually go ahead and use puppeteer to open the browser and get our search results so we can do const browser equals await puppeteer dot launch and we can go ahead and get headless now for me i'm going to go ahead and make this true but i believe you could also do new um, that's going to be an update in the future, so just keep that in mind, but I'm going to do true for this. So after we do that, we can do const page equals await browser dot new page, and then we can go ahead and do var URL equals, and I'm going to go ahead and get the GitHub search URL. So this is going to be GitHub. Uh, and then it's going to be dot com slash search question mark Q equals and then we can do query then we can do and type equals repositories because we're searching for GitHub repositories. So now we can actually go to that URL so we can do await page dot go to and we're going to do URL and we don't actually have to do any changing of the query. Uh, to go to this URL because it's going to take spaces into account when using Puppeteer, but we will be altering this URL in just a bit. Now we can do const data equals await page evaluate, and we're going to go ahead and open up a function here. And in here, we're going to do const results, and we can set that to an empty array. We can do const data elements equals, and we can do document dot query selector all. Now in here, we're going to go ahead and get the element we're searching for. Now on GitHub, this is what it's going to be. It's going to be data dash test ID, and then it's going to be the results list and it's going to be the CSS property as well. So just go ahead and copy all of this down uh, and then that will work. So after you get all that, we can go ahead and do data elements for each and we can go ahead and get our data element and we can actually go ahead and open this up. Then in here, we're going to do const title element equals data element. And then we can go ahead and do dot query selector. And I'm going to go ahead and get the selector that we're using. Again, just go ahead and copy all of this down. Make sure you get it perfectly because if you mess up one character, this will not work. So after we have the title element, we're going to do the exact same thing for the language element. We're going to go ahead and do const language element equals and we can do data element dot query selector. And I'm going to go ahead and get the query selector element that we Need to get for this so now that we have our title and our language element just by the way make sure you actually go ahead and pause the video and type this down and all of this down exactly as it is here um, but now we can actually go ahead and do some filtering so we can do if title element we can open this up we're going to do const data object and we can do equals we can open this up as well we're going to go ahead and create the object that we send to the filter that we can actually go ahead and put this in the embed with so we can do title and it's going to be title element dot text content and then we can do dot trim and now we can go ahead and add a comma we're going to do link it's going to be title element and then we can do dot href and we can add a comma and finally we're going to get our language and this is going to be our language element and we can do a question mark operator and we can do language element dot text content dot trim and if that doesn't exist we can do a colon and we can go ahead and say n slash a. So sometimes the language will not be included on this, but the link and the title will always be included. 
but if the language is not included, we're just gonna set that to NA with some logic here. Now we can go ahead and push this. So we can do results.push and we can go ahead and get our data object. Finally, we're gonna just go ahead and do return results because we need the results array to be what the user sees when they actually go ahead and manage the data variable. All right, so now that we've done all of that, we can actually go ahead and do await browser.close. So now we can go ahead and say if data.length is less than or equal to zero, then we can just go ahead and return await interaction to edit reply and we can say content and i'm gonna go ahead and get an alert emoji and we can go ahead and say nothing found matching query and we can do backslash tick and we're going to get our query just like that and we can also go ahead and say please note that this may occur due to a rate limit we can go ahead and do three dots and we can say if this is the case try again in a few seconds. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and format the data array into something that we can actually send within an embed. So we can do const format equals data.map. We can do item and we can do arrow function. And we can open up a string and we can do brackets because we're gonna make this a link and we can open this up. I'm gonna go ahead and get item.title. And then outside of the brackets, we can do parentheses and we can go ahead and open this up. We're gonna get item.link. Finally, we can go ahead and do a semicolon and we can do language. We can do a colon and we can open up item.language. So now that we've formatted this into something that we can use in an embed, we're going to go ahead and make the button for the embed as well. So we're going to do var fixed URL equals, and we can do URL.replace, and we're going to go ahead and do slash slash G, and we can do comma, and we can go ahead and open up a string here, and I'm going to do a percent sign. One thing to keep in mind is you do have to add a space between the slashes. I just figured that out. Now we can create our button, so we can do const button equals new, and we can do action row builder, and we're going to go ahead and add components. We can do new button builder. Just make sure you go ahead and press tab so that it actually defines it above. Then we can do set label and I'm going to go ahead and do a view all and then we can go ahead and set a style and this is going to be button style dot link. Just make sure you define that as well. Then we can go ahead and set our URL, which is going to be our fixed URL. This is going to account for spaces that might occur. For example, if your format was uh, discord bot JavaScript and that was the query you put in, it would have spaces and that's not going to be a valid URL. So to fix that, we just go ahead and replace those spaces with these percent signs, and then that makes it a valid URL. So now that we have our valid URL and our button, we can actually go ahead and make our embed. So we're gonna do const embed equals a new embed builder, and I'm gonna go ahead and set a color. For me, this is going to be blurple. Then we can go ahead and set a title, and I'm gonna go ahead and say GitHub search results matching and we can do backslash tick i'm gonna go ahead and get query just like that finally we can go ahead and set our description and i'm gonna go ahead and do format.join and we can just go ahead and join it with an empty string now we can go ahead and send it so we can do await interaction to add or apply we can go ahead and get our embeds which is going to be our embed and we can go ahead and get our components which is going to be our button so with that we are actually done so far, we've gone ahead and opened our browser, gone to the URL with the search query. Then we went ahead and actually scraped the browser and we got all of the data that we wanted to send matching that query. Then we went ahead and formatted it all and we actually went ahead and sent it. Now, keep in mind, this is gonna go ahead and get the first 10 results because it goes on different pages. So in order to get more than that, you would have to actually click on the other page and get more from there. So. It's just a little bit easier if you only get the first 10 results. So with that, we can actually go ahead and save the file, restart the bot, and test this out. All right, so over in the Discord server, we can go ahead and test this out. I'm gonna go ahead and get my GitHub search command. And in our query, we can just go ahead and search for something basic. So let's just go ahead and search for something really broad to start. I'm gonna go ahead and do JavaScript. And we can just go ahead and click enter here. What's actually happening here is it's opening up a hidden browser. And this is actually going to go ahead and send our results. Now, to start off, we get an error. And it's going to go ahead and say nothing found matching JavaScript. Now, the reason we're getting this is because we're being rate limited. For some reason, GitHub rate limits these kinds of searches every now and then. So now that we've rate limited ourselves, we can actually go ahead and try the exact same thing again. And we can just go ahead and send it. Now, this time, as you can see, after our rate limit, we did get our response. But I did make an error in formatting that so let's actually go ahead and fix that all right so to fix that just go back into the code and go over to the format section right here and we can just go ahead and go to the end of it after the string or technically in the string and we can do backslash n 
So after you make that change, this should be fixed. So let's go ahead and turn this on and test it out again. So one other thing I did do in that change was I turned headless to false so that you can actually see what's happening behind the scenes with this test. So if we go ahead and run GitHub search, this time let's try JavaScript again, just so that we can get better search results. As you can see, what actually happens here is it opens up a browser, gets all of those search results, and it formats it and it sends it. So as you can see, we have our search results here. They're linked. And then we have our language, which is JavaScript. Now, ironically, not all of the languages are JavaScript, but most of them are. And note, you can actually go ahead and click on this link and it will open up the GitHub repository that it scraped. The other thing you can do is you can go ahead and click view all. And this is gonna open up that search result uh, that we searched for before. As you can see, here are the values. And I want you to notice the first value here is actually on this list as well. So let's just go ahead and try this one more time. This time we're gonna do something a bit more obscure and we can add some spaces in there as well. So we could go ahead and do discord.js version 14 discord bot. And we can go ahead and send it here. And we're gonna go ahead and give it some time to think. As you can see, it opens up GitHub and then it sends us our results. So this is the top 10 results and we have our discord bot repositories here. So let's just go ahead and click on the first one, open it up. And as you can see, we have a discord bot repository. One thing to note is make sure you have headless on true. I had it on false for the purpose of showing how this actually works and how it works behind the scenes, but it's a lot more efficient if you just have it on true and it looks a lot better for the person running the host. So just go ahead and turn that to true and you won't see that browser opening up in the background. So that's how you can make an advanced GitHub search command using your discord.js version 14 bot. If you do need Need any help with this just go ahead and join the server in the description below and use our help channels here and we'll be happy to help you out and you might as well just join anyways because this is a pretty good coding community and with that i will see you guys in the next video